Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the start of a new vlog. Andrew and I are on our way to get some Indian food tonight because we already ate the meal plan that was planned for today. <laughs> Quite delicious. Pretty good. Yeah, um, found it not, on a. Not my favorite Indian food in Brooklyn, despite being this is one of the best places in Brooklyn. But... Yeah, so I found it on a, a best Indian in Brooklyn Google search, and it happened to be in walking distance from us. And I didn't think it was bad. It wasn't the best, but in all honesty, I haven't really experienced like super good Indian food in Brooklyn either. Have you? No, not really. Yeah. The place we ordered from before, it's like... Taj Kebab King? Yeah. I love that place. That's the one in like... Williamsburg. Yeah. This is Cafe Steinhoff, or what was formerly Cafe Steinhoff. Now it's a Mexican restaurant. But this is where Andrew and I had our first date and the uh, location of that illustration that my friend sent me that I showed you in the last video. Good afternoon. It's Thursday afternoon. What'd you say? I'm telling people that it's Thursday afternoon. <laughs> it's Thursday afternoon. I'm in the craft room and I am about to get started on my uh, like honeymoon dress project, I guess you could say. My dupe project. I'm so excited, so looking forward to it. If you haven't seen already, I'll post a picture on the screen of the dupe and I'm going to be using this pattern, it's Vogue 1672, and this pattern, Vogue 9351, the jacket part of the pattern, the neckline right there, to achieve the look I am going for. I've cut out all of my pattern pieces. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. I have my sewing assistant here, Mika. Excuse me. My order of operations, I think, is going to be like this. So I'm going to be following the pattern of the wrap dress or the faux wrap dress for the most part until I get to where I would need to do something about the collar and the side seams on um, the mashup pattern, the suit jacket pattern. So I'm going to follow the wrap dress first, do the darts as it's indicating here, at attach the side piece on the bodice. The bodice has like a main front and then like a little side piece that gets attached. It's like a seam detail. I'll do the back bodice as instructed. And then it starts getting into instructions about sewing together the uh, shoulder seams. So I think before I do something like this, I'll refer to the jacket pattern, which has uh, a piece that kind of like goes around. Let's see if it will show. So this right here, this little neck piece is actually on the bodice front, which extends up and away a little bit from the shoulder seam. So it's like a little L. And then you attach those on both the left and the right side at the neck seam. Um, so I think I need to refer to the jacket pattern instructions first to see how, like what order they do that before sewing like any shoulder seams together. So after I finish these three steps, I'll refer to the jacket pattern and then see how the jacket pattern goes. Here's a look at that bodice pattern that I was just talking about. So the seam from the, from the jacket, the shoulder seam is right here. And this is actually what curves around behind the neck to create the collar. Tonight 
Tonight is Italian night. We are making spinach lasagna, no, not spinach lasagna, uh, zucchini lasagna. One of my favorites, you uh, slice the zucchinis into like thin sliced noodles. We use our spiralizer though, because it takes less time. And that replaces the noodles and the texture is almost exactly the same as noodles. So it's kind of like a lighter, healthier version of lasagna and it tastes delicious. It's so good, so good. waiting for the lasagna to cook so while that is in the oven I am going to be addressing envelopes for the wedding invitations. I need to get these out like yesterday. <laughs> Here is the finished product. It's so delicious. I also made a little bit of cheesy garlic bread to go with it. Let's dig in. I am back in the sewing room post dinner working on my dress. It's been fun so far. I'm just kind of plugging away. I'm really curious to see how this collar is going to come together because I've never worked on anything that has a collar before ever. So I'm really kind of like, I'm just reading the instructions really carefully and trying to follow them, you know, like make sure I've got crossing the T's, dotting the I's before I do anything that I can't undo. So I'm really interested in this process to see how it turns out. All right, I think I'm going to pause here for the night. I got quite a bit done. On the fronts, I sewed the side front to the main front. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Come here. Come here. I know. I know. So mad. So mad. Um, pin the side front to the main front. Stitch the darts. Um, stitch the darts in the back. And now I'm getting to the stage where I need to attach the front to the back at the shoulder seam and then kind of like around the collar onto the back piece. So I'm gonna save that for tomorrow when I feel like I'm approaching it with like fresh eyes, clear head. I think that's the best way to go. So I'll see you guys in the morning. I love that we can see this wisteria from our window. Fleeting but beautiful. Good morning, everyone. Getting ready for the day. I'm doing my makeup. Andrew is in the kitchen making focaccia. It's Friday. It's gonna be a good day. <laughs> I'm still putting this uh, L'Oreal Paris Infallible Pro Glow uh, foundation to the test. I've been using it for the most part this week and really been loving it, so I'm gonna keep using that. I also got my first ever uh, gifted beauty products from Merit. I've used their blush in the store before and I really, really loved it. It's my like next step blush purchase. And when they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try this and their um, Day Glow Highlighting Balm, I said, yes, absolutely. So I'm really excited to give these a go today as well. Andrew and I split um, having 
people clean our house for the past two days. You guys, the windows, let me just show you. The windows look brand new. I can't, I can't. I was in shock, honestly, absolutely in shock. This is not a makeup tutorial, by the way. I just kind of like wanted to show you like how some of this works in case you're looking for any suggestions because this, like I said in the last video, is a really inexpensive uh, makeup item. Let's buff that in. Like I said, I don't really wear a ton of foundation, just like a little bit to even out my complexion. And it's not even a daily thing. I just, some weeks are more interested in using it than others. This I've been using for a while. It's the concealer, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer. It's a favorite of mine ever since Alana Davidson mentioned it on her YouTube channel and raved about it. I swear, like everything that she likes has been an absolute win for me. So I trust her recommendations wholeheartedly. Beautiful, beautiful. Like I said, I'm just like in love with this right now. Okay, next up, contour slash bronzer. I've been using this Huda Beauty cream contour for a while and I absolutely love it. Cream products are my favorite right now because they just look so dewy on the skin and like just give it a natural skin finish texture. So it looks more normal, like your skin but better. All right, next up, this is new. This is the blush that Merit sent me. Like I said, I've tried this on in the store uh, and I really liked it, but it's the first time I'm trying it at home. Oh, that's a pretty color. How much am I putting on? I'm so blind, I can't tell for sure. Ooh. Might have put a little too much of that on. I'll fix that in a second with some blending. Oh my gosh, I love that color though. Ugh. I love that color. It's such a good like natural flush color for my skin tone. And again, that was Merit Flesh Balm and this is the color, where's the color? Cheeky, yeah, cheeky. Now for the eyes. Whenever I'm feeling lazy, I honestly just take the same cream contour slash bronzer because I like browns for my eyeshadows and I just use that as my eyeshadow as well. It helps like keep continuity with the rest of the face and it, I don't know, keeps it like looking consistent, I think, with the rest of your look. This brow product is almost out. I've already ordered something new from Sephora because I've been rocking this for over a year now. It's time to refresh something new. I love swiping brow products though. They're so quick to use. And then last but not least, this highlighter. I don't tend to use a ton of highlighter on my face, honestly, like maybe just a little bit in like the high points of my cheeks, like under my eyes especially, and maybe like a little bit down the nose and on Cupid's bow, just a little bit. But my favorite place to use highlighter actually is like on my chest, especially in the summertime, like around my collarbone. So I'll basically take my makeup brush that I use for my bronzer and just kind of use the leftovers in the hollows of my collarbones, like scrunch up a little bit and on the outside like this chisel them out and then use the highlighter on you can see like where the natural light is hitting me like on the highlights of where the natural highlights would be on your body so just draw a little bit of this on that's so pretty so pretty i love the stick application as well work that in 
and it just gives this super dewy glowy finish i think it's so pretty i love that and i love the application like the applicator i mean as well that is the final look by the way if it's your first ever merit purchase they send you this adorable bag bento bag with your order so cute and you also get free shipping on any purchase over forty dollars i'll make sure to link everything in the description box below in case you want to try out anything for yourself but yeah so far so good i'll continue to put these to the test darling what do you think oh absolutely lovely would you say that no matter what i looked like i did <laughs> <laughs> unreliable biased opinion andrew has made us a delicious focaccia one of his specialties excited to sample some of that okay the bathroom is as finished as it can be for a little while so i figured i'll go ahead and do a little bathroom reveal for you to show you everything that we did so here it is, the finished bathroom. We took out, back out here. We took out all of the beadboard that was over here. We took out the pre-existing tile that was here and then redid the tile using the same tile that we had left over from the kitchen and we supplemented with a little bit more. And we tiled from the top of the shower or the tub edge all the way to the ceiling, which I think gives a lot of height to the room. I really, really love it. It has a charcoal grout. And then we carried that tile all the way over to meet the beadboard on this wall. We did not replace the beadboard. We just left this beadboard, but did a refresh and repainted it. So it's a little bit fresher. Um, and yeah, and we also added this chair rail tile, which I just think adds such a nice touch to it. It just finishes it so nicely. If I could go back and redo it, I would probably tile this whole side just because I think this is an awkward little shape here, but you live and you learn. It's not our forever home. So this I think looks just fine as it is we got the replacement uh, sconce in that was broken one of them arrived broken so we got both of them in and i think they look amazing the mirror that we want is currently on back order i'll insert a picture of what it looks like uh, it's on back order until june 3rd so we don't have too long to wait for it and honestly it's really not been that big of a deal we have a lot of mirrors around the house to like help bounce light around. So there's plenty of other options for us if we need to see something. The vanity was one of the top things that I wanted to change in the bathroom because the old one um, was kind of like crumbling apart, especially on the door and water would like pool on one side of it because it wasn't inserted uh, levelly. So Andrew had to cut some pieces. We still need to kind of fix that. You can see on the feet because the floor is so uneven in here. But yeah, back out a little bit more. So yeah, we can went with this wood vanity. It's actually like a dark espresso color. It looks almost black though, which is fine because we were kind of debating on if we wanted a black or a wood vanity. So this is just fine. It has a marble top. And then this faucet came from Wayfair. This is like an English style kind of like bar faucet. I love the hot and cold taps on it. I think it's really pretty. Just one thing that we weren't really thinking about when we got it is that it does extend like far, far into the sink. So whenever you're washing your face, it like gets in the way a little bit. So it's taking some getting used to, but I do love the look of it. The towel bar hardware and the toilet paper roll hardware were pre-existing things that I already bought from Anthropology, like I wanna say two years ago now. I kind of stalked them, wait for them to come back in stock. I don't know if they're still stocked or not. If they are, I will link them in the description box, but I love this like leaf pattern on it. I just think they're really pretty. 
And yeah, so that's the bathroom refresh essentially. We're still, like I said, waiting on the mirror. Oh, we got a new rug as well. It's not a very high pile on it, but I like the colors. I didn't want something that competed too much with the red because I didn't want it to be like overwhelmingly red. And we had the option of getting a runner that went from here all the way over here but ultimately decided not to do that because we love the hexagon tile floor which we kept it was original to the bathroom and so we really really liked it and wanted to keep that so we just got a little rug that would go right in front of the tub and this is one from the chris loves julia laloy line again i'll leave it linked in the description box but it just picks up the right colors it's got like these like rusty red colors uh, which we color matched. We did repaint the walls, but we just kind of took a chip off of the original wall color. And Andrew took that to um, the paint supply store. I don't know which one he got it from. I'll ask him and see if I can find the paint color. But it's this kind of like brick red color, which we really liked. It was already kind of in here, so we just wanted to copy it. It adds a lot of life, I think. This uh, bar of soap holder is also something that was pre-existing. I got that from an Etsy seller. It's a vintage piece that I just think is so cute. So we are going to put some art up on these walls, but we're not exactly sure what we want to put it in here. A while ago, we bought a tapestry when we were in France, actually. Let me show you. So this is the tapestry. We bought this at a flea market in France. And we bought it with the intention of putting it in the bathroom because we liked the red background on it and thought that would look good on the red wall. But unfortunately now the direction that we've taken the design of the bathroom, it's kind of this more like classic New York art deco style, especially with those sconces. And this just doesn't fit the aesthetic of the bathroom anymore. So we're gonna keep it obviously. I mean, it's beautiful i love it but i it's just not going to go into the bathroom i'll have to find a new place for that so yeah tbd on what will go on these walls those two matching frames that we got at the big reuse thrift store i love the idea of using them in here but they're not very big they're small but i like that there's two of them we could put like one above this towel bar and one above that one maybe i don't know i really like those frames so it's possible that those could go in here but yeah and so that is the bathroom, I'll leave all the sources linked in the description box. The most splurgy thing was definitely the vanity and the sconces. Um, the most of the tile we already had, so all in all, a really nice refresh that we'll get to enjoy for several years to come. We are still looking for a shower curtain as well. This is just the liner. I think I'm just gonna get something, I don't know, I was gonna say something just kind of like plain white, but I like the idea of doing like a linen, like an oatmeal colored linen potentially. I have this fabric in my stash. I have this amazing like linen crane embroidered fabric in my stash and I think this would make a really cute shower curtain. I've thought about that several times. So TBD on the shower curtain as well. That, uh, the art and the mirror are the last pieces that we need for it. We're just taking a little break, walking over to the garden, seeing what's new. By the way, I just wanted to say, for those of you who have left like such nice, kind comments about these vlogs and how much you're enjoying them, thank you so much. I feel like when you embark or start on something new, it can be a little nerve wracking. You know, like all I have to go on is view count, likes like metrics that i really don't care about or ever really pay attention to but when you start on something new you feel a little self-conscious like are people gonna like this are people gonna hate it and you know i don't want to be for everybody like it's not that i think i need to be universally liked or popular it's it's nothing like that it's just i don't know i just don't want to put things out that people don't like so thank you so much for all of the kind comments and you know, assuring me that I'm, that you're enjoying what I'm doing and it's just really nice. So thank you. These roses are about to be going insane. I chopped all of these down and all of these like canes are just starting to come up. Look at these gorgeous roses, all these rose buds. It's getting ready to burst. The lupins are looking incredible. The catmint has started blooming. The salvias are getting ready to start blooming. 
My Wollerton Old Hall rose has just got so many buds on it compared to last year. And my Olivia rose has started blooming. So, so beautiful. Look at all those petals. You can see it in so many different stages here. By the way, thank you for everybody who weighed in um, with the opinion that it was probably a cat in my cat mint. Go figure. It's now a very cute donut hole. I keep catching this garden at the wrong time. Every time we've been here the past, well, once, two times. <laughs> It's just started raining and I keep feeling raindrops, so I guess we're going back. We're back inside. The weather can't decide what it wants to do. So I am sitting on the couch underneath the blanket, snuggled up while my love works on a new project and I'm watching a movie on Netflix called Toscana. I just want to watch it for the Italy cameos. I was wearing yesterday. I am honestly so in love with this dress. I really want to get another one in a different color or measure it and sew one myself. I, I just really, really like it. I'm really excited to sew this seam. I'm sewing the lining to the self and it's uh, the part where it's gonna cut the notch in the lapel. So I'm like really anxious to see how it turns out. All right, let's go. I wonder if I should reinforce this notch in any way? I don't know. The instructions didn't say to reinforce it, but part of me is thinking I should. The instructions are oddly vague for this part of the jacket pattern, which you would think they would have, I don't know, more instructions around it uh, because it's like such a feature, not usual, a not usual uh, design detail, but so it goes. Okay, let's see. Okay, it's got a few wrinkles in the corner there. I clipped really close, so I'm not sure how to avoid that, but I think overall it looks really, really nice. If you are a seamstress or, or seamster and have any advice in the future for how I can get really crisp inner corners like that, is it because I went over it two times? Um, then I would love to hear your thoughts. Grace, aka Weezer Dreams, looking at you. If you have any advice you want to give, that would be great. But yeah, I think it looks so pretty. It's just such a classic neckline, isn't it? All right, I'm going to do the same on the other side. This is obviously just one half, so I'll be back in a moment. Just to give you guys a little taste, this is kind of just, just the first half that's on, and I'm just so in love with it. It's so beautiful. It'll be like, you know, a wrap dress. I think it's gonna be so classic. Oh, I'm in love. I am a little concerned that this armhole is a little bit high. I'm planning on finishing it by bias binding it, an invisible bias binding. So hopefully that will take care of it when I do that, that that'll make it a little bit bigger, the armhole, final armhole size bigger. But 
yeah, overall, I think it's going to be a gorgeous top. I really hope the fit is on point. It's a Vogue pattern, and I find that I have a little more um, accuracy with the fit with Vogue patterns for whatever reason. Their drafting, I think, just better suits my body. But yeah, fingers crossed. I think it's going to be sensational. Feeling very proud of how this hack is turning out. Oh my gosh, I think it's so pretty. It's looking so good. Oops. Okay, a few days ago, I placed an order on Sephora. Just some stuff that I saw and was influenced by that looked absolutely amazing. All right, here's what we got. To move this white dress out of the way so that I don't get anything on it. Okay, so the first thing I picked up is this, the Inky List Retinol formulated for normal skin. Apparently it helps to reduce wrinkles without irritation. And honestly, getting wrinkles is not really like a concern for me, but I do like want to try to take as good a care of skin, like as good a care of my skin as I possibly can, just to like help it keep its, you know, like bounce and, you know, elasticity and to help it repair itself faster. So I'm going to try a retinol. I've never used one before. I don't really know what to expect. And this was a very low price point. So I figured I'd give it a go. Next one, I think I mentioned this earlier, I'm almost, I've been using the brow gel that I have for like over a year. The one I have is from NYX, NYX, and um, I, it was just time to get a new one because that one's like not really putting out much product when I use it. So I'm trying the Benefit Give Me Brow, which is, or Give Me Brow, which is one of the most popular ones on Sephora's website. I got that in the shade 4.5. This is a free sample that I picked up. It's the Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Look at this little mini bottle. I love the perfume that I use. It's called Victoria's Secret Bombshell. I love citrusy scents, especially things that smell like grapefruit. That's like a big thing for me. I don't like vanillas. I don't like musk. Um, I don't like anything that's really kind of heavy. I love a lot of colognes. I used to wear Carolina Herrera for men uh, growing up. I still have a bottle of that. I love a lot of cologne. I just want to give more fragrances a try because I don't have very many. Oh, that smells nice. It's quite a youthful scent, actually. Floral. There is a little bit of musk in there, but it's like floral and got a bit of gardenia-ish or lily of the valley. It smells good. That smells really nice. It's a little bit uh, more musky than I tend to go for. And like I said, I, when I use the word musky, I don't mean that in like a musk scent so much as I just mean how it lingers and clings. It definitely feels like a warmer. It's a little bit warmer, but it's still bright. It's like bright and warm at the same time. That smells really good. I like that. I'll give that a go. That's a good like date night almost kind of scent. So that was a free sample that I got. This is something I used at my points to try out because it's almost getting time to replace my mascara. I try to dutifully replace it every three months to keep it fresh to help um, not introduce like any bacteria into my eyes and stuff like that. So I wanted to give this new mascara I try, even though I love the mascara I use. I would try this since I had a bunch of points and I need to spend them on something. So I got the Dior Dior Show mascara. So I'll try that. Something else I meant to get and I forgot to get uh, is a brown eyeliner. I'd really love to try a brown eyeliner. Okay, now this is by far the spendiest thing that I got. It's the Tatcha, the Silk Sunscreen. Um, it's got SPF 50 in it, and when Alana Davidson used this on her YouTube channel, it has like such a glowy kind of, they call it the silk sunscreen because it's got this, oh, it's coming out. It's kind of melty. Oh, one second. Crisis, you are too expensive to be wasted. No tinting in it at all. There's no color in it or anything, but when she put it on, it has... Uh, niacinamide and hyaluronic acid so it's really hydrating in addition to having the SPF 
in it and when she used it on the base it just added like the glowiest skin below her makeup so I really wanted to give it a try it was it was spendy though so if I don't like absolutely you know if I'm not absolutely blown away by this I will not repurchase it but I definitely wanted to try it after seeing how amazing it looked on her so that's my little mini Sephora haul. I will keep you updated as to my thoughts on any of these or if they are worth your time or money. Could this be any cuter? <laughs> All right, I've got this visor from Amazon because I wanted something to like protect my face and shoulders when I'm out in the garden. I mean, how cute, how cute is this? I've been working on my dress for several hours now and I'm gonna take a break because I just made a really stupid mistake. I mean, it's something I can easily undo. It just took me a while to do it. So I think I need, I need to put a pause on that for a little while and I'm gonna go outside and check on the garden. I am out in the Black House garden right now. Andrew has been working on repointing this brick wall all day. He assures me that all of that concrete will wash away with the next few rains. Right now I am snipping back the rest of my tulip foliage. Uh, everything has kind of gone over. The alliums are coming out now and I'm going to plant up these two beds with the rest of my seedlings that I'm going to plant over here. Definitely a lot of dahlias, lots of cosmos, um, zinnias for sure, and then anything that I don't put in here I will take over to the arbor garden and plant over there. Look at these, so crazy. So Andrew and I are on our way to our local pub, stopping at the Arbor Garden to see what's new. And look, the first Crown Princess Margareta Bloom. This is one of my top two favorites, my favorite climber. It's so beautiful. It's like a peachy leaning slightly into orange, but you can see how peachy it is. It's just so gorgeous. And the scent is fruity and classic and beautiful. Lupins are a feast for the bees right now. Salvias are about to pop. The catmint is blooming. So much purple. The garden is so purple during this part of the year. My irises, this is a variety called frappe. It's kind of blush pink, absolutely stunning. Untermeyer Gardens. This is the entrance. 
there is a walled garden that you see here and then more of like an open air series of little gardens that dot around the outside of the walled garden. said we should get a raccoon. <laughs> you uh, did. You did. Pretty sure. So Brittany and I are just walking around looking at the beautiful gardens and we spot, hold on, hold on. Do you guys see him? <laughs> on this bench lounging with a book. <laughs> He's so cute. Oh my god. So we've stopped for lunch at Yonkers Brewing Co. in Yonkers. This is my first time in Yonkers before. It's a cute town. It's cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't sound bad. Finished lunch and now we are exploring the waterfront of Yonkers. The city is in the background. So Yonkers is north of New York City. You can see the city over there. We are back home, Mika snuggling, Andrew's working on a not so miniature, miniature, and I want to get the rest of my seedlings planted up at the Black House Garden for sure, uh, but it's 90 degrees out, it's the hottest it's going to be right now, so I think it's just smarter if we wait for it to get a little bit cooler before going outside. All right, it's a little while later. It's cooled down about 10 degrees. So I'm going to take off my makeup, put on a top and some shorts, and I'm gonna go finish up planting out the Black House garden. Before I change, maybe you would be interested in knowing, this is a very modified McCall's M6955. It's an out of print pattern, but you should be able to get it on Etsy if you're interested. When I say heavily modified, I mean very modified. The neckline is completely different. I kind of like chopped off the neckline on that pattern or not really chopped it off on the actual pattern but I folded it before I cut it and then added these straps in and it's also fully lined with um, Liberty of London fabric. It's lined on the bodice only though not on the skirt and it's one of my favorites. It's inspired by a dress from a brand called Dish that was serving me Instagram ads and I loved it so I used it as inspo to make my own hot pink version. It's like definitely one of the brightest things in my wardrobe, but I love it. I absolutely love it. 
I've now changed into more comfortable gardening attire. These are the Persephone pants turned into shorts. It's also a shorts pattern by Anna Allen Clothing. I made this in a stretch denim and the next time that I make it in a stretch denim, it's very comfortable um, in a stretch denim. It's not designed for stretch denims though, it's designed for non-stretch. So if I were to make it again, I would definitely size down a size because you could, I can like pull this way off of my hips and it gets kind of bigger in the waist. So next time I make these in a stretch denim, I will definitely size down. But they are some of my most comfortable shorts. I love the stretch denim. I really want to make another pair. This fabric was some leftovers that I got from my friend Grace, aka Weezer Dreams, on Instagram. I have talked about Grace many a time, but if you don't follow her, she is one of my favorite people to follow on the internet. I learned so much about her and she's just such a kind and generous person. Before I go out, I noticed this in the background as I was filming about the shorts a second ago, but I just got myself a steamer and I'm really excited about it because I'm the kind of person who, you know, maybe you think it's gross, but I do not wash every single art like article of clothing every time I wear it. I'll definitely wear it a few times if I haven't like excessively sweated in it or gotten it dirty, of course. So I really wanted to get a steamer because the steam will help kill any like germs or bacteria in the clothing, but it doesn't mean I have to wash it and loosen the fibers and like wear the fibers down. So I really wanted to get a steamer for that reason. Also, because I'm not sure, I mean, I'll have to test it out, but whenever I'm sewing and cutting out a new project, sometimes the fabric is like extremely wrinkly and I don't need it to be like pin straight, you know, like super, super crisp with an iron necessarily, but I think maybe just like giving it a bit of a steam will like steam out some of the like bigger wrinkles when I'm cutting it. So I'm not sure if that's gonna work out, but I'm curious to give it a shot. Also, I sew with a lot of really tricky fabrics, like, let's see, aha, here we go. Like this silk organza top with flutter sleeves that gets extremely wrinkly. And I'm thinking that a steamer will really help with this, with these kinds of garments and these kinds of fabric. I've just spotted my first bees in the black house garden. I'm so excited because most of the time it's wasps back here, just wasps. And I can see two big bumblebees right now. Tis the season of purple in the garden. <sighs> Looks good. Feels good. I got so much planted today. Planted lots more dahlias, cosmos, zinnias, scabious, some astilbe. It's all looking really good. The sweet peas are finally doing something. I feel like it took them a lot longer than usual this year to get going, but they are finally growing up. Remind me of koosh balls. You know what I mean? Those like kids stretchy slingy toys. Next. Um, next we need cherry tomatoes. First cookout of the season. 